Hi guys and welcome to today's video on standard scores. Yes, really good to see you. This is part of our further maths course. And if you are here, you are obviously looking for how to work out standard scores that relate to the normal distribution and our standard deviations and uh, the 68, 95, 99.7 law. And so it goes on. And it is really good to see you. If you're an old hand and you have been watching my videos before, welcome back. And if you are new, it's really good to see you. If you can do me an honest favor, and over there, there is a red arrow just appearing for you to click and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, I say this at the start of every video, but it's literally just me trying to do a pretty big job and uh, record all of this content for you guys to do well. So if you can subscribe, it means the world to me. Thank you so, so much. Now, standard scores. By the end of this lesson, what I'm hoping you do is know what a standard score is, know how to calculate standard scores, and actually use them to compare performance. Standard scores are awesome, and believe it or not, we use them as teachers all the time. How? Well, we like to compare you across all sorts of different subjects. We like to sort of work out where do you fit in the group. Over here in Australia, uh, the VCE is all based on this type of stuff, and so uh, hopefully you'll get a better understanding of why we would use this stuff. But um, in the last lesson, we looked at something called the 90, uh, sorry, 68, 95, 99.7 law, and that's going to come in handy. If you haven't already seen that video, please, please, please go back and have a watch. It's on my uh, YouTube channel. It's on massguru.com for you to watch as well. It'll just frame what we're about to do here. We're going to deal with standard scores. Now, the first thing to notice, ladies and gentlemen, is that standard scores are also known as Z-scores. Why? Who knows? Barry's been at it again. Thanks, Barry. Life couldn't be more complicated. You're calling it a standard score and you're calling it a Z-score. Whatever. But actually, believe it or not, you've already met them. But you've met them under a different guise. So let's go back to our normal distribution. Do you remember from the previous lesson we could draw our normal curve or our bell curve? We could split it down to some sort of central value and then we can split it into sections by drawing three lines. And this split into sort of four sections. And if you remember, these were called standard deviations. That there was one standard deviation. That distance there was one standard deviation. And that distance there was also one standard deviation. In fact, all of those distances are one standard deviation. So that was 1SD, that was 2SD, that was 3SD. And if we go the other way, which is that way, then it's minus 1SD, minus 2SD, and minus 3SD. And you're going to say, well, hold on a moment. What's this got to do with anything in terms of Z scores? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you now that those standard deviations numbers 1, 2, 3, and minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 are also Z scores. And you're going to say, what do you mean they're also Z scores? Well, I know I'm scrolling off, but imagine I'm going back to drawing exactly the same diagram. Ooh, there we go. And there's my middle line. It's still my mean. Now, what I'm going to call my mean is a Z score of zero. If I have a Z score or a standard score of zero, it means I am smack bang on the mean. I'll come back to what that means in a moment. Still the same three dotted lines, but now those are one, two, and three. And so this axis here is my Zs, or right, my Z scores. And once again, if I split it into thirds this way, it's minus one, minus two, and minus three, okay? So basically, standard deviations and Z scores are exactly the same. And you're gonna say, well, why can't we just deal with standard deviations? Well, the point of it is, imagine I do a test in mathematics, well, so this is maths. And I end up drawing my bell curve and I know that my center, my mean score was say 70 out of 100. And I had a standard deviation of five. So that's 75 and 80 and so it goes on. But what about if you did a score that was actually, or a test that was actually in science? So this is now science and the average score was 60, all right? Which group did better? Well, at this moment in time, we can't really tell because I also need to know my standard deviation. So what if my standard deviation here was just two? So I had a different mean and a different standard deviation. Well, what would be really good is if we could then compare you, your math score and your science score. And the way we do that is to use these Z scores. Each of these graphs has a different mean and a different standard deviation, but in each of them, we can turn those standard deviations into Z scores, and then we can compare you and go, ah, actually they did better in X, Y, and Z. Now don't press stop, not just yet, guys. This is a preview video and you've reached almost the end of it, but it does continue over on mathsguru.com. 
Masquero.com. Yep, that's my custom website. Bits of it you can see around me at the moment. That has been designed to allow the videos to be easier searched than they are on YouTube. So you can search by chapter, by textbook. Each video has downloadable notes for you, so you can put them in your summary book or your exercise book. There are exam questions and there is more and more content and more stuff coming as time allows. So head on over there. It's absolutely free to sign up and I'm doing everything I can to make sure that you guys enjoy maths and actually take out the mastery of maths. It is not as hard as you think. It is all smoke and mirrors. Okay, thanks very much. Take care guys. I look forward to seeing you in another video. Stay safe.